In this video, what I want to do is show you how you can take an image with an alpha channel and then convert that into thickness. I've seen this done a few different ways, mainly with um, array modifiers, basically duplicating up the image a bunch of times. But I've never really seen a way that gives you proper geometry outlines, and this way will give you that. It is a fair bit heavier than other methods, but I also think it gives a much nicer result, so you can weigh up which one you think you should use. Now you can't just extrude this, which you would think you'd be able to do, because what you end up getting is just two planes that aren't connected in any way. There's no easy way to connect them um, just using traditional methods, but we can do it with nodes. So I'm going to open up a geometry nodes editor and then turn on the wireframe overlay in the viewport quickly. And then what the first thing I'm going to do is subdivide this mesh a maximum number of times in one node, six. And the reason I'm adding all this geometry is because I want to delete out any points that don't intersect with the alpha of this image. So in order to delete out any parts of the image that aren't solid with the delete geometry node, I'm going to add in an image texture and I'm going to plug in the alpha of our image texture into the selection. But you can see there's immediately a problem and that's that the textures don't line up. And the reason for this is because of how textures are mapped in geometry nodes. They're mapped up based on global position coordinates and not on UV coordinates, which our texture is using in the shader editor. So in order to make them both use the same coordinate system, I'm going to have to plug in the UV map into the vector input on the image texture. So I'm going to add in a named attribute node, set it to vector and select our UV map. And now you can see both line up perfectly. Now you'll see there's an immediate problem in that the solid parts of the image are the parts that get deleted, which is the opposite to what we want to happen. So to change this around, I'm going to add in a color ramp in between and I'm going to flip the color ramp first, then set it to constant and then pull the stops a bit closer together. And now this won't make any difference in this particular image, but in the cases where you might have a blurred alpha, bringing in the black value will stop the outline from um, being above or outside of the object. One more thing that I forgot to mention is that when you're working with multiple uh, cards in a scene, you'll want to make sure that you plug in the image to the group input in geometry nodes, just in here, so that you can change the uh, image to whatever you have in the shader. That way you can use the same node group across multiple images. So what we now want to do is separate out our outer edges of these islands into just essentially their, their outlines. And the way I'm going to do this is by using a separate geometry node and then using an edge neighbors node. And by checking if this value is equal to one, we will be able to select the outer edge. You can see that we're not getting the full outer edge at the minute, but to solve this, all we simply need to do is change the separate geometry from point to edge, and that way we'll always end up with solid edges. Now you can see this outer edge is quite blocky, and that's based on the resolution that we set in the subdivision mesh node at the start, but we can artificially smooth this out by converting this to a curve and then using a resample curve node. And now instead of choosing a count, what I want to do is instead choose a length so that this is a much more procedural way. I don't have to manually update the count for all my different types of images that may have large outlines or whatnot. And I'll just plug this length into the group input node so that I can control it on the fly. So that if there's a particular card that I import that looks quite uh, low res, I can change the resolution for each individual object. And you can see as I change this, we get closer and closer to the original subdivided mesh or we get further and further and more smoothed. To further increase the resolution, what I'm going to do is duplicate up that subdivision mesh node at the very start and set it to two, put it right after. That way we'll have a total of eight subdivisions, which will be much more accurate. You can increase this further, but be careful because the performance cost will be quite high. Now what I want to do is actually convert this curve back to a mesh so that I can use an extrude mesh node, extrude the edges, and this is where we're actually going to start giving this object thickness. You can see initially it extrudes based on the normals of the curve, which makes it go in this sort of crazy way. But if I plug in a vector node and just make it go straight up by putting a positive value in the Z, you can see that we get proper thickness. But the problem is if I rotate this card in edit mode, the uh, extrude mesh still goes directly up globally, which isn't what you would want to happen. You would want it to be perpendicular to your original plane. So how do we do this? Well, we can use the normal of the original plane to drive the extrusion. And because the original plane at this point in the node tree doesn't exist, we're going to have to use a capture attribute node at the very beginning and then plug the normal into the capture attribute node with its vector and then drag in the vector output of that into the offset of the extrude mesh 
and it will always now extrude perpendicular to the face. And you can see we can't just use the normal node um, at this point in the node tree without a capture attribute because it will use the normal of the curve, which isn't correct. Now all that's left to do is join in the original geometry at the end of the tree, um, but you'll see we don't get a back face filled in because we still need to create another plane uh, that is at the thickness of that plane. Now the simplest way to do this is just to extrude the original plane, extrude faces, and for our offset values, it will actually be the same as the original thickness. So I'll just plug in a value node to drive both of those. And you can see as I increase or decrease that, that value, the thickness will change and the back face will always line up perfectly. Now I'm going to use a math node to multiply this value by minus 0.01 so that I can put in a value from 0 to say positive 5 instead of minus 0.05, which is a bit tricky to put in. And then I'm going to connect this to the group input, call it thickness, and we're done. Now, of course, you could set a material for the uh, part that is extruded out that we generate, or you could leave it white. I think it looks kind of nice white. It, it really depends on what you're using this for, but hopefully that's useful to you. I mean, most people are making tutorials on spaceships. You'll never see any other channels that are providing you with such excellent content on how to extrude smiley faces, so please subscribe.